The ground shakes and you hear a loud cracking sound. Oh no! The dome is failing! Everyone runs to their skate pods to evacuate. People are pushing and shoving. The Earth-like atmosphere in the dome is going to be compromised, and you'll be exposed to the thin elements on the surface of Mars. Everyone rushes to put their helmets on. The crack is getting bigger by the second, and people are panicking, trying to get on the escape shuttles as quickly as possible. In the chaos, they all jam into the wrong ships, and there isn't any room for you. Red warning lights begin to flash in the dome, and a voice rings out, telling everyone to put their helmets on. The Martian atmosphere is only minutes away from rushing in, and humans won't be able to breathe otherwise. This is just your luck. You only just arrived on Mars. As the ships zoom off into the distance, you wonder what you should do. You call out for help, but no one answers. Suddenly, a robot guide rolls up behind you, and you hear a faint noise coming from its speakers. It says, no one can hear you because the atmosphere on Mars is so much less dense than on Earth. It also has a lot of carbon dioxide, which absorbs sound waves. Even if a loud concert was happening just 30 feet away, it would sound like it was miles away. Would you like me to assist you with anything? You ask it for help, and it shows you a 3D layout of the entire dome. You can see a few other shuttle stations, so you decide to aim for them. Unfortunately, you're going to need to get to the opposite side of the dome to reach another shuttle station. Just as you begin to panic and wonder how you could get there, the robot transforms into a bike and tells you to hop on. You get in and cruise through the city, looking at all the empty buildings and streets. The crack is getting even bigger, and tiny pieces of the dome begin to fall from above, like snow. When you arrive at the other station, the last few people are boarding the only shuttle. You chase after them, desperately trying to get their attention. As you ding the bell on your bike, though, it barely makes any noise at all. Their ship pulls away before they can notice you. You ask why sounds aren't working, and the robot explains that you can barely hear high-pitched noises on Mars. The carbon dioxide makes high-pitched noises, like bells and chirping birds, almost impossible to hear. If only you were still on Earth, they might have noticed you. The robot tells you that there's one last chance to escape. He transforms into a tiny spaceship. You get in, and he flies through the crack in the dome out into space. It's going so fast that you should be back on Earth before long. Just as you're starting to relax and enjoy the sights of space, you see a red light flashing on the robot. You ask it what's wrong, but you get no response. Suddenly, you realize that you can't hear anything in space. Sound travels in waves, and it needs something to move through, like air or water. Space is a vacuum with no air so you can't hear any sounds at all. The spaceship suddenly changes direction and blasts off away from Earth. You try to steer the robot in the right direction, but you can't figure out how to get its attention. The ship charts a flight all the way to Venus. As you get closer, the turbulence kicks in. Venus has winds faster than any tornado on Earth. You keep getting swept away, trying to find a safe space to land in. The robot manages to keep a steady course, despite the wind throwing it all over the place. You can already feel the heat through all the layers. Finally, the robot spots a small cave in the distance and attempts to land there. As soon as the robot touches ground, it morphs into a spacesuit you can wear, so you're safe in the extreme environment. Today's forecast in Venus? Heat. Extremely boiling temperatures all day and night. Expect clouds of sulfuric acid and gale force winds. The atmosphere is mainly made up of carbon dioxide, so you can expect your voice to drop deeper too because of the planet's dense atmosphere. It's only the second planet closest to the sun, but it's actually the hottest. Its atmosphere traps the heat from the sun and keeps it around the planet. It's actually so hot on Venus that it could melt lead. If you were cruising by with the spaceship, the whole thing would melt in a matter of minutes. Luckily, you have this indestructible robot armor. You try to ask the robot how to get back, and your voice sounds crazy. Your vocal cords vibrate slower here than on Earth, which makes the pitch lower. But at the same time, the speed of sound on Venus is a lot faster, making it more squeaky. Then, the high carbon dioxide content in the air creates a weird effect that tricks your brain into thinking that the sound source is small. Overall, you sound something like a cartoon duck. You look out across the horizon and see many hills and mountains scattered across the plain. But the robot tells you that many of these are volcanoes. Venus actually has more volcanoes than any other planet in the solar system. 
scientists discover more than 1,600 only on the surface, which could mean there are even more than that still undiscovered. Yeah, maybe being here all day isn't such a good idea. And not just because of the heat. A single day on Venus lasts 243 Earth days. In fact, a day on Venus is longer than a year, because it only takes 225 days for it to complete a rotation around the Sun. It's hard to understand each other, but you eventually manage. The robot tells you that it just got lost, and that you'll be back on Earth in no time. While walking around the cave, you realize that you're actually inside a volcano. You tell the robot to hurry up and get you back home before it erupts. It's clearly not very good at navigating space, though, because it's not long before you end up somewhere else. You're now on Titan, Saturn's largest moon. The moon is so large that it's even bigger than Mercury, the planet closest to the sun. The spaceship arrives in the atmosphere, which feels and behaves similar to Earth's. The only noticeable difference is the orangey haze hanging in the air, which makes it a lot more difficult to see. As you descend towards the moon, the robot detects signs of cyanide gas all over the surface and fluffy clouds made out of iced methane. You land on a soft spot and set about trying to get the robot to take you back to the right place. At least this time, you're not sweating. The robot transforms again and begins to scan the surroundings. The atmosphere is around 60% thicker than on Earth. Walking around feels like you're wading through maple syrup. There is a really high nitrogen content in the air, so things sound surprisingly similar to how they do on Earth. You tell the robot you really want to get home now but it comes out as a loud, raspy shout. This is because Titan has more nitrogen than Earth, and because sound travels a bit slower. Luckily, you can still understand each other here. The robot tells you that it needs to absorb a bit more energy from its solar panels before taking off. So you have a look around. This moon is one of the only things in the solar system that has fixed bodies of liquid like rivers, lakes, and seas on its surface. You can understand why the robot got lost now, given how similar Titan is to Earth. Titan even has liquid cycles, with rain, evaporation, and condensation. This isn't water, like back on Earth, though. The main liquid here is methane. Scientists think that there may be volcanic activity, but instead of molten hot lava spewing out, it's water. Other planets, like Mars, have ice on the peaks of their mountains and evidence of water beneath the surface. But nothing is as close to Earth as Titan. Some scientists believe that this moon could be our next home billions of years from now. The sun's temperature will increase by then, making the Earth's atmosphere uninhabitable. By then, Titan's cool temperatures will be good enough to create stable oceans and sustain life. The robot finally gathers enough electricity to fly away, so you can head home. It'll be nice to have a normal conversation where your voice doesn't sound like an exaggerated cartoon. Why do we look the way we look? Most of it's down to dear old planet Earth. It's atmosphere, gravity, that kind of stuff. When you go on a week-long beach getaway, you get a tan. Basic. But what about living on a whole other planet? One astronaut spent a whole year living on the International Space Station. Zero gravity means no healthy pressure on your body, so his bones got weaker. So did his muscles. It also gave him more space between his vertebrae, so he got a bit taller. And that's only a year. The more time you spend at the beach, the darker your tan gets. So, what if we move to Mars? The first major change you might notice after a couple hundred years is your brand new skeleton. Gravity on Mars is much lower than on Earth, so your muscles and bones would probably shrink. Not great for surviving on a new planet. Gravity would make us feel our weight differently. If you weighed 150 pounds on Earth, you'd only feel like you weighed about 50 pounds on Mars. You'd need to eat more to get stronger and bigger to make up for Mars's weak gravity. Sweet! Time to grow some larger and stronger bones, organs, muscles, everything. There'd be one more dramatic change. Your largest organ, your skin. It's the most important barrier that protects you from everything. Germs, wind, UV light, looking totally creepy, you name it, it does it. You might just need a whole new skin. How do you feel about orange? 
Sorry, people. Green skin is totally sci-fi. Here's the deal. Carotenoids offer quite a nice protection against UV light. That's the stuff you find in carrots, sweet potatoes, bell peppers, tomatoes, pumpkins. A Mars farmer's market could make a fortune. The more of these veggies you eat, the more orange your skin's gonna get. If you followed a special diet and wore high-tech gear, chances are, one day, living on Mars might be totally normal. Living on Mercury would be really tough. It's the closest planet to the Sun, and it's definitely hotter than Earth, but weirdly, not hotter than Venus. It's really hot during the day, about 800 degrees, but at night, it drops to negative 290. Days on Mercury are kind of crazy. You know, when you finish the day, but you didn't really get a lot done? Problem solved, move to Mercury. A day on this planet lasts about 58 Earth days. That means you'd have a lot of time to get ready for bed. My guess, though, you'd probably get kind of bored. One excellent solution. Somehow, become made of metal, like titanium, nickel, or platinum. Those guys can handle extreme conditions. Life on Venus would be way worse than Mercury or Mars. Pressure might be a tiny issue. You'd probably have one long, never-ending headache. Standing on Venus is like being 3,000 feet underwater. Oh, and that thing we need every moment of the day? Chocolate. Uh, I mean, air? There's not a lot of that floating around on Venus. There's carbon dioxide everywhere, and the planet's surface is completely dry. That means it's going to be hot. 870 degrees hot. There are a few species on Earth that can survive the boiling point of water. And maybe if they mutated somehow, they'd survive Venus's crazy heat. 266 degrees is the record so far, set by a species of microbes. So get ready for an epic body transformation. Want to live on Venus? You'd probably have to turn into a tiny microbe just to survive. Luckily, Venus's atmosphere has phosphine, which isn't great for humans, but microbes just love it. But since you're not a microbe, not yet anyway, you'd need to wear special gear to control the pressure and feed you air. It's not looking good. Maybe it'd be easier on Jupiter. Yeah! No. It's got no solid land. This planet's made of hydrogen and helium and is known as a gas giant. Unlike Saturn, you'd probably end up just floating around on it. It's like a giant cloud, and if you ever managed to land, it'd be like walking through a super thick fog. Temperatures fluctuate a lot here. It's freezing on the surface, and the atmosphere can be super hot below the surface. We don't really even know. If you lived on Jupiter, there'd be no spoken languages. The gas planet absorbs radio waves, so even if you could speak, no one would hear you anyway. And there'd be no music, so no dance parties. What's the point? People would have to communicate in sign language. Great, but it's not. The atmosphere on Jupiter is wild. All kinds of winds and gas clouds. You probably wouldn't even be able to see anything. So that's not gonna happen. Still, Jupiter is awesome to look at. It's so big that it can fit all the other planets in our solar system inside it, with room to spare. A trip to Saturn will set you back about a decade, and it'd be a big old waste of time. Saturn's mostly made up of layers of gas. It has no solid surface, so farming, building, or any other normal Earth activities are out of the question. Before landing on Saturn itself, you'd probably want to explore those iconic rings around it. You'd fail, though, because the rings are made of millions of ice sprinkles floating in space. That's pretty hard to walk on. You might have thought that Saturn was going to be a good fit for you. Some layers of this gas giant sphere actually have quite a nice temperature. If you dive into Saturn, you'll get to a layer with liquid molecules and a cool 32 degrees. That's like northern Canada, Alaska, Sweden, except that you can't walk on it. Anyway, it's only one minor layer, and the rest of the planet is insanely cold. So I guess if you still want to live on Saturn, you've got some work to do. No biggie. 
It just got to turn into a snowball or something. What about Uranus? Time is kind of weird on Uranus. So if you're out that way looking for a nice vacation spot, definitely choose this planet. A two-week getaway on Earth lasts three years on Uranus. There's even a sea if you're up for a beach vacation. The only problem is that it's made of ammonia, that gross-smelling stuff they use for cleaning. But watch out where you land. If you get it wrong, you might end up spending a whole year without any sun. How would you change if you had to spend a whole year in the freezing dark Uranus winter? We'd need bigger eyes to see in the dark, plus more of that thicker skin to keep the cold out. We might even develop a new hearing system, like dolphins have. Neptune. It's another gas planet, but scientists think there's probably a dense core inside. If you took the plunge to live on Neptune, you'd probably turn into a space reptile or cosmic fish endlessly floating around on the surface. Gravity on Neptune is just a little bit stronger than on Earth. Still, it'd be really hard to stay in one place. The wind there is super strong. You'd have to be much heavier to resist it. Time to eat again. Woohoo! But this planet's really impossible to live on. Scientists don't even want to send another spacecraft there. Welcome to Pluto. Freezing cold, tiny, and super far away. Doesn't sound too exciting. It's even smaller than our moon. It would be so hard to stay on the planet. No more trampoline parks, people. You'd probably have to build yourself a huge machine that would spin you around, sort of a fake gravity machine. Still, you try spinning around all day, you'd need a brand new nervous system to avoid feeling queasy all the time. But Pluto's not all bad. There's a liquid water ocean beneath the surface and ice mountains. If you got yourself a highly trained crew and a bunch of expensive gear and regular supplies from Earth, nah, too much hassle. Spaghettification. Wonder if you can choose your own sauce? It's actually something you might experience if you ever tried to live in a black hole. It's the process of squeezing objects, like you, into long, thin cosmic strips. So, good news, you'll get much taller. Bad news, you'll be thinner than a single human hair. You're strapped in a spaceship that'll take you all the way to Pluto for your galaxy backpacking trip. It's the longest journey from Earth and without any shortcuts, so you'll have to get quite comfy. It's recommended for everyone aboard to have at least eight hours of sleep at night. Astronauts in the International Space Station have little rooms suitable for one person with special sleeping bags and enough room for personal belongings. If they don't, they'll float, bumping into each other. It's a good thing the journey to Pluto will only take you a few days, so you can manage to have your full eight hours of sleep for the rest of the trip. After a few days, you finally arrive at Pluto, and a bus takes you to the hotel. The dwarf planet is one of the darkest places in the solar system, reflecting very little light since it's located far away from the sun. You look out the window and see some decent landscapes with mountain ranges around 10,000 feet high. But instead of your snowy peaks like in Switzerland, it's methane ice. You have a smartwatch that can tell you the atmosphere characteristics outside. Pluto is filled with nitrogen and methane. After a couple of hours, you finally make it to the hotel and check into your room. You're surprised that you booked one day only. One of the first things you'll notice is the weak gravity, which makes it pretty hard to sleep. Then, finally, after enjoying a full day, you're ready to hit the sack. But the day isn't technically over. A solar day, when the planet rotates around its own axis, needs around six Earth days. So your 12 hours of fun and exploration was like enjoying just an hour on Earth. If you think that's long, then don't bother waiting 248 years to celebrate New Year's. That's the time Pluto needs to orbit the sun fully. After a while, your biological clock adjusts to conditions on Pluto, so you end up sleeping for more than 72 hours to feel fully refreshed. You check out the next day, Pluto's next day, and fly off to Neptune. 
this magnificent blue planet may seem appealing, but it's extremely dangerous. But why not? You like the adventure. You get a fantastic view of all the 14 moons of Neptune while waiting for room service. You're somewhat jet-lagged and decide to sleep for a few hours. Even though you chose to take a nap, you end up wasting the whole day doing nothing but nibbling on snacks in the buffet. A day lasts around 17 Earth hours. You were able to fall asleep and slept for about 10 hours, which is more than half a day. And just like Pluto, it takes more than 100 years for it to orbit the Sun, 165 Earth years to be exact. After a while, you adjust your sleeping habits to just around 3 hours to enjoy the rest of your trip. You arrive at the largest planet in our solar system, Jupiter. After landing, you have to commute for another whole month before you come to your hotel. Don't worry, a full day is only about 10 hours. You check in and decide to stay in the hotel. It's not easy to go out since the weather is stormy. One of your programs includes a trip to the Great Red Spot, an area that's been tormented with hurricane-like storms for the past 300 years. The whole spot is twice the size of Earth. Jupiter could easily fit in 1,300 Earths. After a long couple of days enjoying the sights, you get back to the hotel and sleep it off. Since 10 hours is a full day, you're pretty tired and sleep off the entire day. But you couldn't get a proper good night's rest since the gravity is stronger than Earth's. Also, it wasn't easy going to the bathroom in the middle of the night. Eventually, you got your two hours of sleep adjusting to Jupiter's conditions. Mars is a lot more scenic than the rest. You book a full day at Olympus Mons Volcano, which happens to be the highest mountain in the solar system. It's three times bigger than Everest. Your hotel has a beautiful view of the mountain and is also the most luxurious and advanced one you've ever booked. The day is 25 hours long, quite similar to Earth's. It means you can get your regular eight hours of sleep. Sadly, outside the dome, there's a mega dust storm that's covering the entire planet. As soon as it settles, you take a trip to the polar caps, which are covered in carbon dioxide snow caps. You can feel the temperature drop. Even though Mars is the red planet, it's pretty cold. It needs 687 days to orbit the sun. Your body is starting to feel the changes moving from planet to planet. In many places, you couldn't sleep well or slept in what appears to be an entire day, even though it was regular for you. On Mercury, you check in at an underground hotel that looks like an ant colony and immediately feel the heat coming from the sun. Mercury is the closest planet to the big guy, but Venus is still the hottest. This tiny planet needs 1,408 hours to finish an entire day, which is around 60 Earth days. It's a good thing you arrive during sunset. You have an epic view of the sunset, and as soon as the sun is completely gone, it gets really cold. Since Mercury doesn't have an atmosphere to trap heat, the cold takes over quickly, so you hibernate for a whole month before leaving. You arrive at Saturn, the ringed planet, and see the giant moons orbiting around it. Saturn only has 11 hours in a day. This planet is also extremely windy in the upper atmosphere. And on top of the fantastic view of the moons, you can't miss out on the rings. They're made out of ice and rock particles, ranging in all sizes from a grain of rice to the size of a boat. Billions of these particles are floating in the air, which scientists believe to be the remains of comets and dwarf planets. Next, you travel to Titan, Saturn's largest moon and the second largest moon in the solar system. According to scientists, Titan has the closest Earth-like conditions. It's just colder since it's further from the Sun. Besides Earth, Titan is the only place in the solar system with liquid lakes, rivers, and oceans. Methane and ethane lakes are all over the place, so you get on a fabulous cruise around this moon. The atmosphere is also similar to that of Earth and has the right ingredients to start life. You look up at the sky and see clouds forming as it begins to rain. You hide under the shady part of the boat and wait for it to settle. Titan has a methane hydrological cycle pretty similar to the water cycle on Earth, meaning water first evaporates into the sky and then it starts raining. After the fantastic cruise tour, you go to some of the other moons and eventually back to Saturn. You're looking through all the pictures you took as you head back to Earth. The whole trip took you almost an entire Earth year, 
and your body just can't adjust to Earth's conditions anymore. You are so used to sleeping and waking up in total darkness, and, in some places, exposed to extreme sunlight. You've slept in different places with different gravity levels, so you don't know what it feels like to sleep on an actual bed anymore. In some areas, you were placed in upright sleeping pods to accommodate for the lack of space. As a result, you're getting constant headaches and keep waking up in the middle of the night, forgetting where you are. Also, you were lighter than you are now for most of the trip, so you lost some muscle mass when you came back to Earth. There are some nights where you don't even sleep and wait for the sun to rise, just like you'd see on Saturn or Jupiter. As a result, your sleep cycles got messed up. Life on Earth got way harder for you after such a trip, so you decide to hibernate for some time to adjust back to our planet's conditions, just like you did on Mercury.